what uh, I'd like to say is the topics that we are starting from today will be very, very uh, helpful for majority of us, uh, more so, but largely for all of us, for majority of us, because there are situations we go through, and more so when we set up on a venture, you want to build a house, you want to build an organization, you want to set up a business, and uh, in everyday life, even in your work with God, you are going to experience a big uh, part of challenge. Uh, there will be challenges big time. And what we are getting started to, on today will be very, very uh, fundamental. It will be the fuel. One of my uh, trainers, early trainers, said that you cannot drive your car. Uh, you cannot be too busy driving your car until you don't fuel. You can't be too busy to fuel your car because ultimately it will stall on the way. And uh, that fueling, uh, he, by, by that he meant uh, training. And uh, this is one of those uh, fueling stations, fueling moments uh, in your journey. So uh, it will be quite uh, helpful and uh, we are getting into the second D, and that is called determination, backed by a burning desire. So we are going to read and then um, we'll do our discussion as usual. So I, I, I don't know who wants to start for us. Maybe I can start this first part. Yeah, then uh, we, we will go to... Uh, th there are two parts I want us to read, but they are pretty short and easy. Uh, determination backed by burning desire, whatever it takes. Are you really serious you want to live your dream? Then failure must never overtake you. James Allen, in his book, As a Man Thinketh, said, the human will that force and sin, the offspring of a deathless soul, can hew a way to any goal, though walls of granite intervene. That's the attitude, whatever it takes. Here is a story you are probably familiar with, perhaps in greater details than me. I got this format recently in social media and found it exciting. Here it goes. At age five, his father died. At age 16, he quit school. At age 17, he had already lost four jobs. At age 18, he got married. Between age 18 and 22, he was a railroad conductor and failed. He joined the army and washed out there. He applied to join law school, was rejected. He became an insurance salesman and failed again. At age 19, he became a father. At age 20, his, father, his wife left him and took their baby daughter. He became a cook and a dishwasher in a small cafe. He failed in an attempt to kidnap his own daughter and eventually he convinced his wife to return home. At age 65, he retired. On the first day of retirement, he received a check from the government for $105. He felt that the government was saying that he couldn't provide for himself. He decided to commit suicide. It wasn't worth living anymore. He said he had failed so much. He sat under a tree writing his will, but instead he wrote what he would have accomplished with his life. He realized there was much more that he hadn't done. There was one thing he could do better than anybody he knew, and that was how to cook. So he borrowed $87 against his check and, and bought and fried some chicken using his recipe and went door to door to sell them to his neighbors in Kentucky. He met with 1,009 no's, 
before finally landing to a yes for his chicken recipe. Remember at age 65, he was ready to commit suicide, but at age 88, Colonel Sanders, founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken Empire, was a billionaire. Until now, his business is still expanding like never before around the globe. What's your excuse? Somebody to pick it from there. Thank you. What's your excuse? Research shows that one of the greatest causes of failure is a tendency to quit when the going gets tough. One who is willing to succeed in a given venture must wear his particular attitude, whatever it takes. No kidding. Somehow, nature in her immense wisdom tends to hide from us all the possible problems and difficult, difficulties we are going to meet on the way. Before we start, it only tells as much of the great rewards that we are bound to achieve painting rosy pictures of what is possible for us. This is a good trick, if I may call it, because without it, no one would really get started. The few who normally take this road would be scared to death if only they had a glimpse of the reality that awaits. Many people who have succeeded, succeeded not only because they had a crowd to get started, but also because they had the starting power, the whatever it takes attitude, and thus persisted to the finish line. We know from testimonies, as many successful people confess, that had they known what they would have to go through, perhaps they would not have started at all. It is that scary. You therefore must have a tough mental attitude, something I call mental toughness, and a certain level of determination that knows not the meaning of giving up. Somehow, nature has a way to, quote unquote, even bend rules and obey him who has refused to let go. That is the way it is. Thinking about this particular attitude, one of the best examples ever known to mankind is Thomas Edison. When he was, he was looking for a solution to electrical lighting, he demonstrated that the only way to fail is to quit. You probably know his, this story well enough too. He was able to withstand just over 10,000 points of failure. That is 10,000 opportunities to quit, but he did not allow himself to quit. When asked at the end how possible it is that a man would go through such staggering number of failures and still disappoint failure by quote unquote, failing to quit, what did he say? Start of quotes, I did not fail. I simply discovered over 10,000 ways of how not to make a bulb, end of quote, was his response. What an amazing attitude. Reminds me of the statement of Apostle Paul in his second letter to the Corinthians in the scriptures, where he says that, of quote, it is when I am weak that I am strong, end of quote. Look at the paradox in this statement. When we used to, with, to hold monthly business meetings for our network marketing business, we would use projectors to run presentations. <coughs> we would borrow a projector from the company. This particular projector would be so difficult at times that we would fail to use it literally for an entire session. But that would never happen easy. My upline directors 
upline would keep tweaking it and trying it for the whole session. I learned a lot from this particular gentleman who actually had been my friend from the time from the time I joined college till this day. He is still one of my business mentors, even as I write this material. He never gave up on anything. Is anyone willing to take over, please? <clears throat> no wonder he would succeed at anything he touched. Even the time we were in college trying to connect the public address system, he would be at it and continue at it either until either it either works or the service ends, whichever would come first. That's what I call whatever it takes attitude. Believe in yourself, have faith in your abilities without a humble and reasonable confidence in your own powers you cannot be successful or happy. Norman Vincent Peale. When we started doing our own trainings, learning and practicing network marketing on our own without our upline president team member, after failing, after falling out with him on the methodology of doing the business, we were determined to try all that would be possible until we would find success that we were looking for. Our team was mostly comprised of college graduates who are full of enthusiasm and could dare to research and succeed at anything. We were clear about what we were looking for, having learned that most people who had been in business in our region were always quitting at some point. We discovered there could be something wrong. During one of our trials and experiments with the systems, this mentor of mine, Pascal, said to me, now we're free, we shall keep tweaking it and tuning it just like a TV area when looking for signal until we find what works and how it works. Those were the days of analog broadcasting technology. That statement made a lot of sense for me, uh, sense to me. I still use it till now, no quitting, just trying until we find what works. I later formed my own system, which till now serves me well, simple, duplicable, and scalable. You must keep trying until you succeed, no letting go. I had Les Brown saying that we must keep telling ourselves, no matter how hard it, get, it is or how hard it's going to be, I'm going to make it. Pascal is a true demonstration of this attitude and has been my great teacher in this field. I thank God for him. Determination always sees the way. It is always powered by possibilities and hope. Hope which does not disappoint, according to the apostles, Apostle Pete, Paul's epistle in the Romans 5, 5. This is a way of thinking, a system of belief, a culture to acquire. It helps to know that one with such an attitude shall rejoice because success shall surely come to him or her at an acceptable time. We even boast of our afflictions, knowing that afflictions produces, affliction produces endurance, and endurance proven character, and proven character hope, and hope does not disappoint. Romans chapter 5 from verse 3 to 5. That's it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So let's let's relate our story. What is our experience with uh, uh, opportunities to quit? What captures our our spirit in that particular reading? What's our experience? Uh, my, my. Yes, Elsie, I would like to listen to you more so when you are starting your <laughs> venture. It's good. Thank you. I apologize because now I, I feel I, I sound like I've swallowed a frog, but it is okay. Um, I'm, I'm nursing a cold. Uh, what I hear, Les Brown, those words of Les Brown, uh, which says, 
no matter how hard it is or how hard it's gonna be, I'm going to make it, end of quote. Those are the exact words my dad kept telling me. He tells me, you know, your dad, your dad will call you by your name, your middle name. And he tells me, when, going, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Those have been my words to and through. So I think my, my, my philosophy or one of the things I know for sure is that no giving up, no quitting. It's going to get tough, but you keep pushing, keep going, keep moving. Yeah, it's going to be better. So those are the words that I was reminded. Did you meet opportunities that tempted you to give up? I don't think it's not going to work. Did you meet it's, opportunity for discouragement? <laughs> the most recent one I remember was when I was doing my diploma uh, in to be a teacher. You know those ones of it's COVID time and uh, COVID has hit. You're even doing your lessons online. Then the Kenyan National Exam Council says you're doing your exams. And I'm like, really? I mean, it's not gonna happen. And for sure, we, we decided we're not gonna give up for sure we got to get this diploma. And so I'm so glad we actually got together, regrouped, uh, studied, studied together, formed study groups. And out of that, none of us failed. We all passed our exam. So yes, if I had quit, I would never have known what it means to stretch myself and get what it is I've always dreamed to get. So I'm a teacher because I pushed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome, uh, Baron. Good, good to have you. Uh, that's Baron. We just met yesterday uh, during uh, we were meeting somewhere, and I met him. That was very wonderful. From Uganda, we have some other Ugandans in Seya, like Aloysius. They'll be happy to know you are here. Yes, Muridi. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Paul Peter and the team as well. A very powerful reading, if you ask me. And I just wanted to share my uh, my, my my own experience or story of uh, how this works and uh, how I've seen it work in my life. Uh, for those ones who know me, like Paul Peter, <laughs> I'm a person with a disability. I use a wheelchair. And uh, for people with disabilities, you know, in Kenya, uh, for a long time, uh, the systems have not been you know, uh, very accommodative. And so when I graduated uh, in the year uh, 2001, of course, I started the job, what I call Kazi Akutafuta Kazi. I started looking for jobs and it was not easy. And I remember going through the motions of looking for a job and I would uh, tamak, you know, look for a job the whole day and, uh, uh, and, and, and not get anything. Uh, then uh, at that time, my sister had also finished uh, a university and she was also looking for a job but I remember we had rented a one room house around where I stay I stay in Kikuyu so there's a place called Getaro and uh, you know we, we, it was 1000 and we could not afford a thousand shillings per, per month and uh, and uh, each one had their own corner with a mattress on the ground and for a whole year I remember people would uh, tell me they want to come and visit me and uh, and uh, I would tell them okay uh, sorry I'm not uh, around this weekend but it, I was wondering how, if they come, where will they sit? And there are no seats. And, uh, you know, uh, as I was going through all that, uh, my parents, I come from a humble background, but my parents were really concerned. They were telling, you know, my son, come home, come. Well, at least uh, you'll get a place to sleep and you'll get a place to, uh, I mean, something to eat. Because I remember sometimes I would go to uh, Tarmac or quote, quote, look for a job. I don't get anything. Then when, uh, at the stage where I used to be dropped, there used to be a, um, an old man who used to sell sweet potatoes. And whenever I come there, I would engage him as a wait for my sister to come and pick me from uh, the bus stop. And he would give me those uh, thin sweet potatoes, the ones that cannot be sold, you know, and tell me, okay, and then Mukakule would let us go and boil this and, uh, and have, you know, because he saw that I was really beaten up. And I, I feel I had all the reasons to quit. But I was saying, I can go home, yes, to my parents, yes. It is a humble uh, uh, home, yes, but I know I'm, I'll be assured of a place to sleep and food and love. But however, I was ready to push uh, and, 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 you know, uh, uh, to, uh, to be able to push, not to give up. And as they say, 
I did that and I pushed and I pushed regardless of, I had all the excuses uh, as we call them to quit, but I never quitted. I looked for job, I searched, I searched, I searched, and I searched regardless of the prevailing circumstances. So it just goes to show that, uh, and today as, we, uh, as they say, the rest is history, because currently I'm in my own home uh, with my family uh, uh, and supporting and doing uh, three other things also doing businesses. Uh, with my wife. So never to quit. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It doesn't matter whether the, 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 uh, the, the circumstances present all the valid quote quote excuses. Don't look at the excuses. Look at the bigger picture and uh, I, I mean and move, uh, push and keep on keeping on. As uh, Paul Peter said, nature has a way of bending the rules and it will bend the rules for you if you are ready not to quit. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, Muridi. I, I, I understand a large part of that story. And uh, I know that Muridi Anthony is the embodiment of uh, determination that knows not the meaning of failure, the meaning of quitting, and determination that is backed by a burning desire. Well done, well done. And, and the future can only be brighter. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, somebody else would like to share melvin it's been a long while since we had your voice uh, you better prepare to share something i know you have experience in this yes daniel good morning good morning good morning good morning to uh, and good to hear you I dropped that name Daniel uh, officially 20 years ago. When I, when I left the US, I left that name there. But because okay. I didn't want to annoy my parents, I still have it on my ID and other for other places, but no problem. Odiambolale is better known as. Yeah, uh, so for me, uh, I really, thanks so much. I like this topic. And it reminds me of the challenges that went through in college, even at work. Later on, uh, you know, the struggle, especially for a foreign student uh, in the US, so you have to wash dishes, you have to clean buildings, you know, all those odd jobs that when, when most people go to the US and come back or even who go and stay there, they will never tell you. That's why you find people are, 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 are queuing at the US embassy, among other places, because they, they want to go, because they only want to hear about the success, not the challenges that goes through it. Anyway, so while at the college, talk about the power, the power of positive mind. There's a song that we, was my driving force, and that was by I think Earth, Wind, and Fire, or one of those groups. It was called "Ain't No Stopping Us Now." Atakama masome likuwa ngumu aje, eh? Kazi na kuwa ngumu, economy, pia, pia, you don't have, you're not making enough dollars. That song kept on singing. Ain't no stopping us now, we are on the move. And uh, that one also helped me even decide that now I'm not going to watch, sit in the US here, washing dishes and doing all these things after my graduation. I'm going back home. And many of the Kenyans there said, no, don't quit. Stay, stay around with us. I said, no, me, I'm going. And a friend of mine also who did aviation engineering, he, he was a petrol attendant with his uh, engineering degree. He said, no way. I ain't going to stay behind here uh, fueling, putting people, uh, fueling people's cars huh? yeah, with my, my degree. He came here and he was the head of the, this uh, airworthiness division at the DC. Later on, he even applied for a job in, the U, in uh, Namibia. And he became the director of uh, the, uh, the, D, the director of the DC of that place. Uh, back to me. Uh, uh, that uh, quitting mentality, I've uh, kept it completely out of my mind, and also encouraged those around me. So last year, when I started my in the middle of the COVID, I started my chicken project. Uh, thinking that I'd learned from somebody, I will not name him, but everybody knows him. 
who started his chicken project and I ended up with some gold, golden eggs. So one, one, over one year later, I'm still continuing with my chicken project for domestic. So if you come visiting me, I'll either give you an egg or I'll give you a chicken or a chick. Uh, uh, lessons learned is that there's no need of quitting. The challenges are there just as we've, we've read it to strengthen and not weaken us. We, at the height of my, uh, when I started my poultry project, I was frustrated. Why? Because there's a neighbor, and there are some neighbor, there are some there are neighbor's cats that would just come here and help themselves to the, to the chicks. One time I had about 12 chicks. Within no time, they were reduced to three. Since then, I've learned many lessons and now, at least out of the 12, that uh, the latest 12, I still have about eight of them. So I think I'm, uh, I'm learning from the, uh, that theory of not, not quitting. There's always hope and we must continue doing that for ourselves and even for those who are around us who are looking at us as role models. Thank you very much for the topic. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, this um, quitting mentality has uh, brought lots of people down because every other time you quit and you start another thing, you're starting afresh. When you're starting afresh, you're starting to look for new experience. And that's why you realize that Kenyans who within one year, maybe you started four businesses. You started with one, you quit at some point, you started another one. By the time you reach December, somebody is calling you to ask for a service or a product you said you're selling, you start saying, oh, I left that one, nowadays I'm doing this. And that makes you not to have any experience worth uh, your investment. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, Melvin. Oh, Otieno, Paul Peter, good morning. Good morning. Okay, so, uh... <laughs> Now my experience <clears throat> about quitting concerns <clears throat> the biggest uh, work that one must do, in my opinion, is to work on yourself. Okay, so uh, this has been a continuous process. Okay, I went to school. I was not very good in, uh, in sports. Therefore, I didn't, didn't emerge as a leader in school. But lo and behold, today I am the leader of our class WhatsApp group. Okay. Uh, uh, and these guys look up to me for direction and, uh, you know, when are we meeting and all this kind of thing. Uh, additionally, uh, uh, one thing that I went through was I went through a separation and divorce. This one really killed my self-confidence and my feeling of self-worth. But I kept on plodding on. I kept on uh, doing very many things until I met Jesus Christ. Okay? And that was a turning point in my life. And I continued to work on myself, which is why I'm in this particular talk. I always attend such talks which can open up my, uh, my eyes to self-improvement uh, and living my dream. So I've even met uh, Otieno Paul Peter quite a number of years ago, and we agreed to collaborate and uh, we are still collaborating by me being here. So having gone through a separation and divorce, uh, that became what was defining me for very many years. Now I'm happy to report that last month on, on February 17th, I remarried, okay? And I am continuously improving myself. And I'm grateful to my new spouse who is helping me along that trajectory. And Otieno Paul Peter, I can only thank you for, for what you are doing here. 
And this, what you're doing here, spills over into my business life. I have been offering free courses on uh, financial management, which means I'm in the same business as Rachel, who is in this call. And I find that my students come, listen to some of what I tell them. It goes in one ear, it comes out the other, but I have not given up. I'm still going on. Aloysius, are we on the same call? Yeah, Elsie, I'm here. Are we on the same call. And I've tweaked the way I'm doing this thing and I'm getting results. So thank you very much, Otieno and Paul Peter. I think I've overspoken. Back to you. <laughs> that really, thank you very much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. You mentioned some statement that I really love that uh, one, uh, working on yourself. And uh, I love to say that uh, working on yourself, in this case is mind, working on your mental attitude. The attitude job is a full-time job. It's a full-time job. It's not part-time. It's not something you do in the morning or like you may be told morning, maybe lunchtime and evening. It's a full-time job. You better know that. So you are doing the right thing. And then there are people who don't, uh, who will know, you will speak to people, but they don't understand, which is okay. I've been meditating this the last couple of days, then I think yesterday, but one or yesterday, I, I, I got this thought, this thought came to me, and it's something I'd known all my years. I'd learned it along the way, that, uh, that uh, maybe they are not supposed to now. You see, even when Jesus was preaching, there are people who listened, who heard him, but did not listen, did not follow. So maybe that is the, the people who get it are the people who are supposed to get it. The people who are not getting it are not supposed to get it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's listen to uh, Christine Sadia and then uh, uh, Baron. Uh, Baron, yes. I think. Thank you very much. Um, for me, I think uh, I've learned quite uh, a bit from the contributions that uh, people have made. But in my walk and in the journey of my trajectory of what I do, I wanted to echo ex especially what uh, Mervyn, my classmate uh, in the University of Nairobi, we are dentists, the two of us, that is a, a common tree that we have, has said, working on yourself. Because sometimes people around you and what is said around you can break you and can uh, uh, spoil your staying power. So what then builds your staying power, I think is a subject that for me is what I love to, to, to discuss. And I think he has also mentioned part of it, getting to be grounded into a greater being, which is uh, the maker God. For me, I have so many stumbling blocks and mountains, and I don't know whether they have been hills. I can't describe them here, but what has made me who I am today, I've not influenced much, but I have a sphere of influence that I carry along. And I have attributes that are only or a few of us that have been described by. And uh, perhaps Obiambo Olale has those a few of those attributes. He can try to get them later. But one thing that I know that your integrity and your, your sphere of influence is built on certain fundamental beliefs. And for me, I want to attribute some to my late mom, how she brought us up. Being somebody that you do not come back and say that you are defeated. If she sent you to buy some, to get something and you come back and you say, I can't do it, you will be reprimanded for him. So that's staying power and finding how you go around the obstacles and still staying on your course and in your path then becomes for me a subject that has helped me so much. But I think uh, uh, Mervin, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Mervin has already said that also grounding yourself. Yes, obstacles can come, they can throw you back. But how then do you again cling on the tree 
and 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 go back on your trajectory so i would like to leave it there but uh, I have a few attributes that have helped me to go one, the influence around me, the people around me, and the negativity for me is one thing that I do not take. If you say something about negative, I will analyze whether that, that statement you have said, has it got a positive attribute or a negative? Is it going to help me move forward or is it going to get me backward? So I have to do my introspection and see whatever that you throw at me, what of it do I want to pick? What of it do I want to leave behind? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, social support system. Yeah, uh, Somebody, Napoleon Hill, calls it the, the mastermind, the mastermind. Having that small group of people with whom you collaborate and discuss and keep others company, very, very essential. And then filtering what gets into your mind throughout the day, throughout the night, every other thing you watch, you read, you must, yeah, and that's why I was talking about, it's a full-time job. If after, praying and uh, thanking God and uh, talking about how the day is going to be and uh, expecting the best. And then you meet the next uh, person and you start discussing how bad economy is. There is no way you have no chance of uh, making it uh, in life. You have no chance, you will quit. Because your language and your activity must be in sync. Thank you very much. Yes, Baron, you wanted to say something? Yeah? Or did he drop? Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Danny, oh, Mr. Odiambolale. <laughs> Uh, you have something you want to add? I see your hand up. But no, I'm not getting you, Ezabo. Uh, you may need to unmute. Uh, we are not getting you. Oh, uh, yeah, I can see you are unmuted, but I don't know your sound. Uh, Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, my hand was up by Mr. Yes. By Mr. But it's okay. I just want to echo what uh, my friend uh, Dr. Sadia said and uh, Melvin, and that is that that social support is very very important. It helps us also have a clear mind about where we are going. Because there are times when uh, we know we know where we want where we are where we want to go, uh, but because of the side shows in our lives, uh, we find uh, we are being pulled down instead of being uh, moving. So that social support is very important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, Baron, are you? Uh, yes, now you can speak. I can even see you. Yes. Thank yes. you so much. Sir. Actually, I'm now back. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, my diva's uh, usual has the talent. So uh, this topic is really very important. Every day we are faced with uh, 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 mental challenges, with the moral challenges, most especially at workplace, in the, our homes. We are uh, uh, just the, as the previous speaker says that people want to pull us back. You know, no one wants to see you moving forward. Uh, we are really, for me, mostly I'm faced with the moral, uh, moral challenges, whereby some people just choose to uh, press the wrong button of me, which is not my character, and they want to bring me down, and I don't accept that, and uh, I end up actually displaying characters that are not ethical. Uh, and the more you display that, the more you are giving them opportunity to bring you down and to, to, de to destroy your what we call character assassination. So how do you do we exactly deal with this kind of people in homes, in every doing that is to have 
you hold, you always uh, give you the way forward. Um, how can you, can we yeah yeah you are breaking but i guess i got your question where you get people to press some buttons in you and, uh, and then uh, you respond accordingly uh, that's interesting how do we deal with that how do we deal with that somebody wants to respond to that yeah mm -hmm. Uh, and and then when you respond as they expect, now they have something to do about it or to say about it. I think that is the question that Ezabo is bringing in. And so they spoil your mood, so to speak. I think that is what we talk about. <laughs> yeah, you think you woke up very well, everything is going to be fine, but then somebody uh, plans to do something and then they spoil your mood. What would we say about that? Rachel, do you want to say something about that as you contribute? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I can try to respond to that as I share my experience on this, but I'm loving the conversation. It is very healthy. And I believe it is for all of us because I say learning is a daily activity. <laughs> to respond to that, I believe no one should uh, determine your attitude for the day. No one should uh, at the, uh, mood. You are the determinant of your attitude. The rest, they should not determine how your day should be. Yes, you may, you may wake up with circumstances which are not uh, encouraging, they are discouraging, but you just uh, shake it off. And because you believe in yourself, go positive and speak positive to that situation. For example, you wake up in the morning and you are feeling tired. Talk to your body and tell your body, no, you have to wake up. You have the energy, you have the breath. God has given you new day. It is the day to wake up and go and do something. So what you speak to yourself is what determines your attitude. It's not about uh, what others say to you. That is my belief. Now, when it comes to not quitting, it has been a test for me, <laughs> especially in my journey of uh, consultancy. Uh, I started in 2018 and uh, I came full time in 2019. And when I thought I am just about to start running, eh? you have hit the road and now you are running, COVID came. And I remember the day the president announced that uh, COVID, that is, we are now two years back then, 12, uh, it was 12th of March uh, 2020, and announced that no meetings no conference. I remember I had scheduled three meetings in CBD and I had booked a boardroom for trainings. And now he has said no more meetings. It was a hit for me. And uh, having been out of employment, and now I have exhausted my earning and uh, my savings, looking forward that I am starting now earning so that I can continue with life. It wasn't easy. And I remember I had to make a quick decision because immediately also the school closed and my children were in school. My girl was a candidate, class eight. Here I am. So I had to decide very fast. And I remember I didn't know now what will happen. So I thought the safe place to be is up country and I had to park and go up country. I picked my kid from school. We went to my parents. We stayed there with the uncertainty which was there for everybody, not knowing what exactly is going to happen. And I stayed at home at around three months, eh? just 
listening, you wake up in the morning and you are listening to the news, what is about to happen now? And uh, uh, the fourth month I had to wake up and say, well, this is something which is there. So I have to continue with life and I cannot now stay up country forever. Anyway, as uh, someone quoted here, the universe has a way of breaking the protocols. Eh? I found myself back into town. I came back and that was a sign for me that uh, I'm not yet done. And God told me it, I had to go through the test to confirm that I truly mean what I am going to do. So I came back in the city and I started all over again. Now it is going online, trying to figure out how. But I thank God because today I'm still on the course. It is not easy because you have to be, yeah, yeah, I have to have a tough mind, as Paul has read in the book. You have to have a tough mind. And also believe, uh, when you believe in yourself, you will be able to do whatever it takes for you to pursue what you are pursuing. But there are three things, three main things uh, that encourages me every day and makes me to push and move forward. Number one, it is personal development. Uh, I found out that I grew up in a place uh, where we didn't have so much uh, in mentorship, coaching, or like I say, role models. This is something I've come to discover on myself when I am a grown-up. And not just a grown-up, but a parent. And uh, I've come to learn that the real learning of life, it is not the school, the college, the university, the PhD, but it is a life skill. It is the real life. So every day I have to make sure that I am and uh, growing. I am unlearning because there's so much I've come to discover. I thought it is the way because I learned through modeling others, through hearing from others, which is not healthy. So I have to unlearn. So every day for me, it is a day to learn and to develop my skills. And number two, it is my values. What are my values? And those are the ones which helps me to make the right decision. Who should be within my circle? Who, is my, who am I uh, going to relate with? Because not everybody must be within my circle because there is somewhere I want to go. And the value which I hold are the ones which helps me to walk through the right track and to be able to accomplish what I want to do. So the values help me to uh, continue with my goals and remain focused. Because if I find this person is not of the values that I hold, then that relationship will not help me achieve my goals. And number three is raising standards. Every day I pursue to raise my standard, not where I was yesterday. And whom am I benchmarking my life with? Because I have to have somebody who is above me, whom I am, who is a role model to me, and I'm working towards achieving and learning from that person. So these three things are the ones which helps me to push forward and make sure that I am not giving up, I am not quitting, and I have to pursue that which God uh, created me to pursue to the end. Thank you for the opportunity to save. And all the others who have shared, thank you very much. I have learned. Yes, I've learned a lot, and I'm still learning. God bless you. Thank you very much, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution and even for uh, contributing towards uh, helping Zabo in his question. Uh, welcome, uh, Elder Musa. Good to see you. That was our speaker last week. Thank yeah. you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Christine Sadia, you'd like to help in that? Yeah, I wanted to help my son uh, a little bit with my thoughts of what he said. What in the people, uh, the negativity that people place around your character is something that we all must know how to deal with it. 
this is what I've lived quite a bit. And perhaps um, how you navigate that, if it has been put in the public domain, you must see how to mop it out because it is going to be a permanent reflection for other people who do not know you, they will depict you as that person that has been character assassinated. So how then as you walk in your trajectory, there are those things that you do not know, do you are not worth fighting about, they would die themselves. But that analysis must be, you must have that analysis and help maybe one or two people confidence that will help you navigate that. If it is in the boardroom or in, in, in circles, in small circles, it's very easy to, to develop an eagle attitude of like, I will wade it off, I will, it wouldn't bother me and I will pass through and they will eventually your work proves them wrong. But if it has been spread within a, a bigger circle, you must tackle it because it is going to be an influencing factor in your life. I think I've been put in papers twice, public, uh, that public notice thing, but mostly it happens when you have a greater power than somebody. So they want to belittle you I would speak why I went to the paper is because of girls trafficking and I was fighting girls trafficking. Of course, the cartels around girls trafficking are so strong that they will do anything and they are backed by money power. So your analysis of how you dismantle that is what you need to invest in. I have not been able to give him concrete examples, but he needs to build networks and confidence. I have great networks that I can tell you. I can pick a call and call any country within Africa or even beyond when I want to get some idea of how to deal with things. But they must be people that have been proven and tested that they are not playing with you, that when they tell you the truth and then when they tell you they stand with you, they really stand with you. Because some of this character assassination comes as a result of your determination and your belief and your value and data. If you you are coordinated, but as anchor yourself, the uh, tools that how then you dismantle that. So thank you very much. That could be a subject for a one-on-one -on -one or later a conversation, but thank you. I just wanted to encourage him that see, I'm seeing a niggle in him and that's why he's being a character assassinated. He should not give up because he's been character assassinated, but that should give him an inner determination even to move further beyond where he is. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that wonderful contribution. One thing I know is we must always choose what brand we want to become. And that is part of the challenge because uh, when we are talking about determination, that determination in that particular direction will be required because there will be the roadblocks and stumbling blocks erected along the way. And as my friend Trump says, just for sport. There are people who will just do it for sport. They just do it because they like seeing you crying. They like seeing you <laughs> frustrated. And you may not want to give them that chance. And that means, like uh, Satya says, you will choose your battles. Which one do you want to fight? Which one do you, don't you want to fight? And standing for the truth, choosing what is worth going for, and above all, self-control. These things, so-called self-control or emotional intelligence at some level, is quite important because if you look at what's happening around us today, you realize that somebody wakes up and maybe kill the whole, kills the whole family because something, uh, it reached where they did not think they can manage it anymore. They even kill themselves. But uh, we can always learn to control ourselves. A friend of mine likes to say, the moment somebody asks you so much, you can count one to 10, yeah, before you respond. That by the time you reach 10, you probably will think otherwise. If you are writing an email, uh, before you tap on send, or you are writing an SMS or WhatsApp, you reread it again, then you count one to 10. In, in our church, Catholic, uh, 
uh, somebody says, you can say one Hail Mary, and then you look at it again. <laughs> so you can develop your own mechanism, that's what we are saying, to delay the activity so that you can think through it and the possible consequences. To me, even if I'm going to fight any battle, I don't make a mistake. Uh, if, if I respond in a particular manner, I still stand with it. So I think through it and say, I own this particular thing. I own this particular response that I'm going to give and I'm ready to defend it. And because we are now running out of time, like in two minutes, I'd like to uh, uh, reiterate some of the things that were spoken by some of you, including Rachel, that one is what we speak uh, for our, uh, the self-talk that goes through our minds will be able to contribute much into whether we are going to quit or give up. Rich has given a fantastic example of when uh, COVID, mm, uh, this COVID pandemic uh, story started. I remember what was happening clearly. We had organized a visit to the prisons. It was going to be my first time to visit prisons. It was going to be on that Saturday, which was 14th. And this previous night, the, 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 the 13th, which was a Friday, I was in charge of a lot of uh, teams organizing and the general communication and everything. And then you are told that all the visits to the prison have been canceled. And you have everything booked, you have the buses, and uh, it was a very tough Friday night. How do you, do you communicate this to all people? And how, how, who told them that we have COVID anyway? You know, I was really frustrated and started thinking, how can one case result into all this termination within one night? It doesn't make sense. And uh, it became something that I kept hearing people talking about fear, uh, talking fear, talking about all sorts of negatives. And by the way, for your information, that gave birth to this particular program that we now have. I tried to give different talks to different people in various forums about how to manage fear, how to handle fear, how to stay positive, staying mentally tough. But then later I realized why can't we have something that we do daily to keep us motivated the whole week and it became Power Monday, which we still do today. So what you speak to yourself, having that attitude of uh, mental toughness, you can always go through it. Having what we also called attitude of gratitude, looking at the things to thank God about as opposed to things to complain about, I always love the story of Exodus in, uh, in, in the Bible, the second book in the Bible. It teaches a lot about what we say, what we do, and our mental attitude, and whether we are grateful or not. And, uh, and uh, the, the activities that we do, we can deliberately do activities that keep us in the positive framework of mind, keep us in the positive frequency, and that will be able to help us. So well, let's remember, Self-talk, what we are going to tell ourselves, like Les Brown was saying there, that no matter how much, how hard it is or how hard it's going to be, I am going to make it. The moment you tell yourself that, that it doesn't matter what happens, I will make it, you will make it. I told myself, and we are going to read this in the next sections, that I will make it. And I was determined to make it. My story, most of you probably already know. Uh, my schooling story and how I chose that I would make it and how I would keep myself either by default or design just thinking of the possibilities and not uh, uh, not the, uh, uh, all the opportunities to fail and that has been able to help me and I know even if you are running a business you are in a college you are in uh, looking for a job like uh, Anthony Muridi was sharing with us his story. In any situation, you're looking for uh, uh, customers. The story that you're going to tell yourself every day, every morning, every other time you are going out will determine whether you're staying afloat or not. And this has made lots of business people go down. Mostly when COVID started, because they told themselves the stories of how people are uh, failing, how businesses are doing, uh, uh, how badly businesses are doing and all sorts of things. If we focus on that, we are going to reap that which we focus on because what we focus on 
expands. Otherwise, whatever it takes is the attitude. Thank you very much.